What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like every single Sunday, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade for this upcoming week being the first week of June in 2019. We're also going to be talking about some that you guys ended up calling out either in the comment section from Friday's video, in the call out section, in our Discord group chat, or through personal DM either on Instagram and Discord. And typically every single Sunday, I'm uploading a video like this, kind of going through my mindset for the upcoming week, talking about some stocks and ETFs, breaking some down, doing the technical analysis, and kind of planning out what I'm personally doing and what I'm personally trying to do for the upcoming week. So if you're a new viewer and you're interested in that type of content, feel free to go down below and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And if you enjoy the content that you do see today, feel free to hit that like button if I do earn that from you. So without further ado, let's just talk about very briefly in under 60 seconds what ended up happening last week in the market. And if you guys want to see a further in-depth market update from last week, I upload videos every single day throughout the trading week where I go over the market for that specific day. And on Friday, I went over what ended up happening on Friday. And we know by now that Tariffs are being put on Mexico, which weighed down a lot on the stock market this past Friday. We can see the S&P 500 went down 36 points, down 1.32% on Friday alone. And if we're just taking a look at the five-day, five-minute, we can see how bad the past couple of trading days have been, right? Just in the past five days, the S&P 500 is down nearly 100 points, roughly 90 points to be exact, over the past five days. Judging on the 184 hour chart, what I'm watching in terms of a support for this upcoming week on the S&P 500 is around the 2738 level, 2740. Looking to see if we end up holding that level. This was a level that used to be a resistance back in the beginning of February. It was a support in the middle of March. And now we're getting close to that level. And if we break that level, guys, we could be heading down towards the support at around 2690. So that's a little breakdown of what the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies has been up to over these past couple of days and some levels that I'm keeping an eye on and that you probably should be keeping an eye on as well if you are planning on trading and, you know, keeping up with the markets this week. So let's just hop into it, guys. You all know, especially those that have been following me for a while now, you know, during time periods like this, when the markets are very volatile, when the markets are typically selling off, I'm not focusing too much on um, date uh, swing trading, right? And someone commented on my video a couple of days ago asking me, you know, during time periods like this, what am I personally doing, right? Am I more conservative? Am I, you know, swing trading more? Am I day trading more? What is my philosophy? What is my strategy? Well, typically in time periods like this, I'm mostly um, day trading, right? A lot of the stocks that I typically swing trade, I'm mostly swing trading larger cap stocks. That's my personal style. You know, a lot of those are really downtrending at this point. The, the trends aren't, um, you know, attractive in, in terms of a swing trading perspective, which is what has led me to day trade a bunch of these inverse ETFs that we're going to be talking about in today's video and these market ETFs and volatility ETFs that do very well in a downswing market. And you can make money when the markets are going down using these ETFs. And a lot of people out there, they don't understand that you actually can make a lot of money when the markets are selling off as well. You don't have to strictly make money on the upswing, right? To be completely honest with you guys, you know, I made more money, you know, trading stocks. Obviously, my long-term portfolio got squashed. But in terms of trading stocks, short term in and out, you know, I made more money during this time period right here when the S&P went from, you know, 27 or 29.45 down to about 23.40 during that October to December sell-off than I did make 
on this big upswing that we saw um, in the beginning of 2019 in terms of my short term trading, right? For me, I like um, trading the downswings and I just typically do better. I don't know why, but it's just the way it is. And I'm being completely honest with you all here. So let's talk about, you know, some of those market ETFs, some of those um, inverse ETFs, and you guys can see a bunch of them right here. So starting off, you know, I'm going to be watching, and a lot of you guys that have been keeping it, uh, you know, uh, up to date with the channel, you probably hear me talking about these pretty much in every single video, right? But remember, we do get a bunch of new viewers on the channel every single day, and maybe they don't know what these ETFs are. So for those of you all that don't know, and even for those of you all that have been following as a quick little refresher, you know, these are the market ETFs that I'm trading. You guys can see them right here, right? You have UVXY which is a short ETF, right, that trades on the VIX. It's a volatility ETF that typically does well when markets are selling off, when the markets are very volatile, and when the VIX, the volatility index, VIX, is going up in price, right? Notice how this went up 8%. The VIX did this past Friday, up $1.41. And what did the UVXY ETF do? This one went up $2.33. It had a pretty nice day, up 6 percent. So this is one of the ETFs that I'm personally following. And again, it goes up when the markets are volatile and trending down and having a red day pretty much. The next one that's a VIX ETF is TVIX. And this is another one that I traded a bunch during the October to December sell-off of 2018. And it trades on the VIX. And whenever the markets are selling off rapidly, when there's a lot of volatility, just like UVXY, TVIX is is going up in price as well. So this is definitely one you guys can see on Friday when we had the red day up $1.86, up nearly 8%. This is definitely one that I'm keeping an eye on and that you probably should add to your watch list if you're into trading these types of ETFs. And just a disclaimer, guys, don't buy any of these just because I'm buying them, not even saying that I'm buying them 100%, but don't just trade them simply because I'm talking about them. You have to understand the risks involved, these inverse ETFs, these volatility ETFs, they swing very heavily. You can lose money, but you can also make a lot of money. But do your own research, your own DD, due diligence, and you'll be dandy. But don't just buy them, on my opinion. I cannot stress that enough. So some ETFs that trade based upon the market, right? The market in general, we have ones that track the NASDAQ 100 and ones that track the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 ones, if you want a direct play on an S&P 500 index in terms of leveraged ETFs, I have a combo for you. The one being, uh, the bull ETF being SPXS. This one goes up whenever the S&P 500 is selling off, hence why it's been doing very well over the past couple of weeks. And you may be asking yourself, what is a 3x leveraged ETF? All that means is that this ETF that you're seeing right here, ticker symbol SPXS, it goes three times um, in the direction of what the underlying asset that it tracks does, which in this case is the S&P 500, ticker symbol SPX. So let's say the S&P 500 goes up 2% one day, SPXS is going to be down 6%, right? It moves three times in the direction. But let's say um, the S&P 500 is down 2%, SPXS is going to be up 6%, right? Notice how it was up 3.9% this past Friday. You'll see the S&P was down 1.3%. Do the quick math in your head. 1.3% times 3 is 1.3%. Plus 1.3, that's 2.6, plus 1.3, that's 3.9, and that's exactly what the SPXS ended up going up. And the inverse to this one, let's say the SP ends up bouncing back. SPXL is going to end up um, doing well, right? The SPXL goes up in price whenever the S&P 500 
is going up in price at a 3x rate. So let's say the S&P is going up 2%, SPXL is going to be up 6% roughly. So that's an S&P 500 duo that I'm watching. You all know if you've been following the channel for a while, SQQQ and TQQQ, those are two inverse ETFs, very similar to these that we just went over, the SPXS and SPXL, but TQQQ and SQQQ, they don't trade on the S&P 500, they trade on the NASDAQ 100 in a very similar way, right? TQQQ is a bull ETF, and do I even have it listed here? Yes, I do. The bull ETF that goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going up. So very similar to the other ones that we just talked about. Whenever the NASDAQ's up 2%, this ETF is going to be up roughly 6%, right? And the inverse to it, the SQQQ ETF, this one goes up whenever the markets, in specific the NASDAQ, is selling off. Let's say the NASDAQ is down 2%. SQQQ is going to be up roughly 6%. That's kind of how it works. So these are a couple that I'm definitely watching again in a volatile stock market. Let's say this bad news, the tariffs with Mexico, let's say, you know, they continue to increase. We just got that news. It's fresh news right now. A lot of uncertainty in the markets. Let's say this continues to drag the markets down. These plays that I just mentioned, that's what I'm going to be focusing on. These are going to be very good. There's going, they're going to offer a lot of potential and honestly guys during a volatile market during a time period where we're selling off we're seeing big swings that's personally what I'm trading and maybe sometimes I'm day trading these large cap ETFs but I or large cap stocks rather but I like focusing more on the ETFs because they offer a bit more margin right they offer a bit more profit to be made there so those are the main couple that I'm watching. Those are six um, that I'm watching in terms of uh, market ETFs. Let's talk about very quickly um, gold. Gold went on an absolute tear this past week, right? A lot of people view gold as a hedge to the market. It's kind of like a safe haven. I don't know if... Um, I personally view it that way. You know, a lot of people in the masses view it that way. And that was a pretty much kind of an indication that we saw the spike up here that kind of indicated that maybe it is a safe haven, right? Because the market has been getting, again, volatile, uncertainties piling up. And then we saw the huge, massive spike in gold, literally from uh, 1283 up to about 1310. Do the math, guys. That's about a 30-point move in a couple of days here on gold. And now we're kind of reversing to the upside, right? We're noticing we're no longer trending below, you know, simple moving average resistances, the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA. We broke out of the 1300 resistance we broke out of the 1305 level of resistance now what i'm personally looking to see if gold is going to honestly end up holding 1300 as a new support and eventually get out of the next level of resistance which is 1315 if that ends up happening you know gdx is going to end up doing well as well. This is a, a gold miners ETF. And what trades on these guys? JNUG and JDST, which are gold ETF combos that I'm personally watching, right? Whenever gold's going up, <clears throat> GDXT is doing well. That is when JNUG is going up in price. This bull ETF that ended up going up 11% this past Friday. This one's at a point in time where, yeah, it's a bit overbought, very overbought in terms of the RSI, right? We see we're at the 75 level. Yeah, we are at a resistance right now at the 180 SMA here on the 184 hour chart. And there's a lot of levels of resistance coming up for go, uh, JNUG, right? We're literally at one right now <clears throat> in terms of, uh, you know, this 755 level. If we continue to go up, you know, $8, you know, 815, 820, these are all levels of resistance on JNUG. But now, what I would love to see for in JNUG would be a break out of the 180 SMA, a continuation into the $8 level, and eventually a break out of the 830, 840, and into the 850 level, guys. I honestly think if we do end up popping up 
selling off a bit, right? Bring that RSI down to a healthy level. You know, that's going to be the technical break that we need to see on JNUG. And of course, if gold continues its push, you know, those are going to be some confirming factors to trade JNUG over these next couple of trading days and maybe over the next couple of trading weeks. And let's say, you know, yeah, it is overbought. We talked about that. So let's say, you know, gold is to pull back a little bit or gold pulls back a little bit. Let's say, you know, GDX pulls back. JDST is the inverse, which will do very well, in my opinion, especially since it's oversold. It pulled back uh, 12%. You know, it'll do very well if gold in general sees a healthy pullback, right? Because everything that's been running up very quickly and aggressively, there's going to be a pullback on that eventually. And with the beauty, the beauty of these inverse ETFs is if we do get that pullback, we'll be able to, uh, you know, profit on this one and then flip back to JNUG on the upswing uh, at a better price if that uh, con confirmation is there for the continuation of that upswing, right? So DWT and UWT, we all saw oil went down this past week, guys. Very, very bad. Very, very ugly drop here on uh, crude oil. Very bad. This is probably like the worst week that we've seen since um, back in October or November in 2018. We literally went from uh, $63 on the 20th of May, guys. And now we're do down $10 from that point at $53 simply 11, 12 days later. That's absolutely unbelievable. Notice how the RSI is extremely oversold here. So in my opinion, we are bound to see a bit of a comeback here on crude oil. Maybe back up to that 50 SMA that has been a resistance over these past trading days. We're definitely going to be able, in my opinion, you know, based on, you know, how bad this has been beaten, we're going to be prof uh, be able to profit on UWT, which goes up whenever crude oil is going up. And, you know, typically I don't like trading, um, especially swing trading, even though I never do swing trade these uh, inverse ETFs, but I just don't like swing trading in general. Figured I'd mention this here. I don't like swing trading, um, you know, patterns that are downtrending like this, right? That's kind of like catching a falling knife. In my opinion, that's not my style, right? When it comes to swing trading, I like, you know, following the trend to the upside like we see here, you know, over the past couple of weeks before we ended up seeing this dip on UWT. That's more my style. But as of now, you know, let's say we do find the bottom and we show some heavy push pre-market, maybe in the beginning of the day on a potential day trade, I think this could be a very good bounce back play. Guys, it was down 18%, right? UWT is at literally $11. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely unbelievable. You know, we could be able to get in here and make some serious gains, you know, if crude oil does end up recovering. So this is one that I am for sure watching this upcoming week. And let's say crude oil continues to go down, which again, I think it's going to bounce back here in the next couple of days, at least in the short term. But let's say it continues to go down. DWT will be a very good play. You saw it goes up when crude oil is selling off and it was up 18%, guys. That's pretty, pretty epic here on um, DWT. So, you know, crude oil and gold, those are some plays and those ETFs that I just mentioned. I think these are going to be very, very good for this upcoming week, especially since we saw how volatile crude oil and gold were. You know, they're very volatile, opening up a lot of profit on those inverse ETFs that we as traders that's the goal of uh, the goal is to try and capitalize on that, right? So those are just a couple here that I am watching. I, you know, YouTube was down earlier. I don't know if you guys uh, noticed that. And right now, I think it's back up, but I didn't really get to see um, uh, a lot of the comments because, again, it was down pretty much a lot of the day, and I didn't really have a lot of time to go check into those comments before recording this video. So I'm thinking off the top of my head now, you know, what are, uh, what are the, I think Microsoft, I got a request to talk about, you know, McDonald's, Coca-Cola. Um, let's just go over some of these guys and why not? Let's go over a lot of the large caps, some of the large caps here so you guys can understand, you know, how the market has been getting hammered down over these past couple of days. So let's start off with Apple. You know, Apple, the downtrend is insane right now. We're at a support at about 175 here. This could be a potential bounce back zone, at least for the short term in terms of Apple. Let's say we break
break that level, this can be a pretty big break down to about $168, which would be the next level of support. We got a request for Microsoft MSFT. Microsoft is finally showing a sign of weakness and a potential technical break to the downside here, right? We noticed the all-time high at 131. We kind of got a double top at that area. We ended up tapping or uh, hitting up at a lower high here um, at 129. Now we're seeing a critical break under the 180 simple moving average here. You know, the EMA is breaking below the 180 SMA. That's a pretty bearish sign as well here in the short term. You know, this could be heading down, especially if we break, you know, below $122, which is the support where we ended up bouncing on the 180 SMA a couple of days ago. You know, some other large cap stocks here, you know, Google, you know, a lot of these are, are the same in terms of technicals, right? They're downtrending, not looking too nice in terms of swing trading, right? You know, Facebook, although they don't have much exposure, any exposure in China, they're still getting hammered down as well, down 3% this past Friday. You know, Netflix down about 2%. You know, the trend's not looking too nice. If we break into the 330s, that could be a big bear move down for uh, Netflix, ticker symbol NFLX. You know, some of these safer plays, quote-unquote safer plays, two value stocks that I talked about last week, you know, McDonald's, MCD. This one's looking decent right now. You know, we're seeing a pretty strong resistance at about 200 bucks. If I, if I honestly see a break out of 200, you know, this one could potentially be a runner, maybe 202, 203, 204, 205 maybe, especially if it continues that uptrend there. McDonald's is one that I'm personally watching. You know, we talked about last week how when the markets are volatile, people are flooding their money out and, uh, you know, out of growth stocks and rotating that money into value plays. And McDonald's MCD happens to be a value play. So people might put money in here, um, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Let's see, guys. Ticker symbol KO is another one that's safe, quote-unquote safe here. You know, we're at a nice pullback. We're holding 49 as a support right now. Filling the gap up to 50 bucks. That's the goal here on Coca-Cola and what I'm personally watching for this upcoming week. So those are a couple of stocks, guys. I'm sorry. There weren't a lot of different stocks, right? You know, in times like this, again, like I've mentioned, I trade a bunch of the same things. I stick to what I'm good at and I've stick to what has worked in the past, right? I'm not out here looking to find the next penny stock, looking to do this, looking to trade some, you know, smaller cap stocks, looking to, you know, triple, quadruple my money. I'm sticking to what has worked, these inverse ETFs, understanding their movements, understanding the patterns and, and using my style of technical analysis and trading to my advantage, which has led me to really just sticking to a couple of stocks here, you know, a couple of large caps that I always like to play. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys are doing this upcoming week. I would love to know. And subscribe to the channel if you guys did enjoy this content. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.